Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, and now we're getting back into the swing of it with tech again. Those of you that have been following along at home probably recognize this computer. This is the ITX machine that I built for a friend of mine uh, who's actually doing some podcast work now as well, and I'll go ahead and drop a link uh, down in the video's description if you want to go ahead and check that out. And in case you're not super familiar with this rig, I'm going to go ahead and direct you to this video up here so you can catch up on the build log that I did for this and familiarize yourself more with some of the more specific parts in this build. But basically, what we have here is an ITX rig running a Ryzen 5 2600 with 16 gigs of RAM and a 1080 Ti. Now, as far as component tuning goes here, the only thing that I was really able to touch was memory. I did get the clock speeds up from 3000 MHz to 3200 MHz, and I tightened up the timings just a little bit. And for those of you that are familiar with a Ryzen processor, you know that memory tuning is almost more important than CPU tuning in this case. So that should still give us a fairly healthy bump in performance. Now, speaking of processors and performance, however, wasn't really able to get a stable 3.9 gigahertz all core overclock out of the Wraith Max heatsink that I'm using here. It's not that it's not a capable heatsink, but the thermal environment in the Thermaltake Core P1, unfortunately, is a little bit lacking. And that wound up being the other portion of the system tuning that I did for this rig. Starting with the dust filter. I took out the dust filter from the front panel because we're already dealing with a fairly restrictive mesh up front and some pretty broad plastic lattice work behind the mesh here, the mesh and the, uh, the foam filter to give it, to give the panel more structural rigidity. So I understand functionally why that's there but it doesn't stop the mesh in the front from being really, really restrictive to the point that taking off the front panel actually results in a drop in CPU load temperatures by about 10 degrees C. Removing this foam drop things by about three degrees C or so, and frankly, this, this being removed just creates one less thing that we have to deal with in this rig now because the only other place there's dust filtering on this case is for the power supply. You've got two wide open side panels here that are no doubt going to let dust into the case, even with a positive pressure system working with this 200 millimeter fan. And it is a quite capable fan. And I even wound up experimenting with some other fan sizes out front, specifically this uh, Scythe Kaze Flex 120 and this Fractal Design Dynamic GP14 fan just to see if focused airflow would work better in this environment versus just a giant fan struggling against the mesh. As it turns out, the stock 200 millimeter fan in this chassis is actually doing a pretty good job of keeping temperatures in check because as I went down in fan size, my temperatures went up. Go figure. Side note, however, you are actually able to accommodate a single 120 millimeter fan in one of these grilled side panels for the case since the openings in the mesh actually happen to line up with typical hole spacing for a 120 millimeter fan. So if you did wanna get a little bit of extra airflow going in this case, you can actually do that. Just be aware that you might have to remove your hard drive cages or at least get rid of the one that's closest to the rear of the case in order to accommodate that because the fan does rest directly on the hard drive cages and I would suspect that with a hard drive populated you then would not actually be able to fit the fan in place. So all told we have CPU load temperatures on our Ryzen 5 2600 with PBO enabled hitting around 68 to 70 C in this case. Not terrible results and we're also seeing somewhere in the range of 75 to 78 C for the EVGA GTX 1080 Ti that this computer will be using once it reaches its intended destination. Our memory overclock wound up being perfectly stable and the 1080 Ti, I didn't actually tune for my performance testing here because this is my personal 1080 Ti. Unfortunately, it's also not a winner of the silicon lotteries. I can't get more than 100 megahertz out of mine anyway before I start seeing artifacting and or crashing. So we just left it stock because I don't actually know what my friend's 1080 Ti is going to be capable of. Now all that said, however, I wanted to have a point of comparison to show you all exactly how strong this particular computer was that I helped them piece together. So the only way for me to do that was to actually take the 1080 Ti from this machine and plop it in my personal rig. 
Now, for reference, my personal rig is using a Ryzen 7 3700X with PBO and XFR enabled, a much more robust cooling solution, double the RAM with better timings, and a thermal environment that is, that is decidedly less restrictive than the one we're dealing with here. Now, all of my testing today was done at 4K resolutions with a couple of caveats to mention. With Borderlands 3, I actually had to use the in-game resolution scaling options since they wouldn't rec- the game for some reason doesn't recognize DSR factors within the NVIDIA drivers. This means that while testing this computer, I had to use a resolution scale of 200% while using my computer with the 1080 Ti in it, I wound up using a resolution scale of 150%. And as far as GTA 5 testing is concerned, which is the other actual gaming benchmark I used, I wound up using a blend of high settings across everything with anti-aliasing turned off. And of course, Borderlands 3 was also using the high preset. So let's see exactly how much this Ryzen 5 2600 is holding back a 1080 Ti, starting with some synthetic tests. We have Time Spy Extreme and Fire Strike Ultra. These are probably the most boring of the results because there's really not much between them. At most, we see about a 2.5% difference in favor of my rig on Fire Strike Ultra, which is a DX11 test, but ultimately, there's nothing really to write home here about, so let's move on. Now, the gaming benchmarks were a little bit more interesting and a bit more telling about where some of the limitations might exist for a Ryzen 5 2600 based system when you're using a GPU that's still as powerful as a 1080 Ti. When comparing the 1% and 0.1% lows, that's where we start to see some of the bigger differences manifest between these two platforms being used, but we're still seeing the lows north of 60 FPS in a game like GTA 5, which is a DX11 title running the Rage engine. It is admittedly an older title, but as we can see from these numbers here, there is no reason to suspect that this machine isn't capable of the 4K gaming that my friend is intending it for in the first place. We're not seeing any significant differences here, at least in terms of perceptible quality. I'd be hard pressed personally to tell the difference between this machine and my personal rig for gaming at 4K. But then we look at Borderlands 3, which is another DX11 title, but it's running on the Unreal Engine 4. We can see here that while neither system is getting even 60 FPS on average using a 1080 Ti with the high resolutions, we do see that the 0.1% lows noticeably lower on, the, on this uh, ITX rig than they were on my personal system. And this was noticeable every now and then with a couple of visual hitches that would last not even necessarily a full second, but the fact that they were perceivable at all means that you'd have to do some judicious tuning of the in-game settings in order to get uh, titles like Borderlands 3 running well at 4K. Now, I know this isn't the most comprehensive of tests ever. Unfortunately, I'm strapped for time and I'm strapped for options right now, but if you wanna go ahead and leave some comments down below, let me know about some gaming titles that you'll be interested in having me add to a test suite like this so I can sort of expand upon the results in the future. So that's it, done and dusted. The ITX rig is tuned and tested. All in all, this actually performed pretty well. Um, just further evidence that when you're playing at 4K, the processor isn't necessarily what's going to hold back your performance the most. It's gonna be the graphics solution that you're using and any of the in-game settings or hardware tuning that you've done on your end. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this one. I gotta get this thing packed up and shipped out and start working on the next video. So toss a thumbs up if you liked what you saw here. Hit that subscribe icon and the bell icon next to it to make sure you're alerted anytime I upload new content. And I'll catch you all next time. Take it easy.